Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to this conversation um, on uh, the changing and evolving role of the enterprise uh, in wireless connectivity. And uh, um, as part of this report uh, uh, by Sense of Feeling collaboration with RCR Wireless, uh, uh, today I'm talking to uh, JP Compagnucci, and he is the market development global le leader in the enterprise mobility at uh, uh, Comscope, uh, uh, Comscope Connectivity Solutions. So, uh, JP, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Monica. Good morning, and glad to be here. Excellent. So. Um, Tell us first about what you guys are doing in, uh, in the enterprise and uh, what, is, what is your role specifically within Comscope? Yeah, well, you know, Comco is a global communication infrastructure company. Uh, we are really where the networks are. It's, we are with from wireline communications network to wireless communication network from data centers to buildings and venue uh, with a wide range of network infrastructure solutions from BSAs, Metro Cells, FTTX, a high performance fiber for data centers, structured cabling coupling solutions, software solutions. So, and within all those, uh, I'm really working with, with dust and small cells. I'm leading the IBW market development initiative for the enterprise. And really the goal is to really to drive the global integration of our IBW offering into the enterprise space, enterprise business. Yeah, and so there's a lot to do, and uh, the, the enterprise, the role of the enterprise uh, is, is changing, and uh, you've been working in that for a while. So can you tell us what's your view on what is changing and why? Well, we, we are seeing that uh, a lot of things are really changing. If you look at the perspective of the, of the users, there is now in the indoor enterprise space, uh, like a universal expectation that that really there should be wireless connectivity throughout all the buildings in, in any parts of the building, not just in certain parts. So, and, and at the same time, because really wireless is becoming the fourth utility, is really impacting the enterprise business. Uh, it's really impacting in different verticals as well, but mainly if you look at the office, it's really impacting in the office productivity of the employees from a building owner's perspective in tenant retention, from HR in talent retention, and it's interesting to see that um, in Comsco, we did a survey some time ago uh, asking to 600 IT and facility managers throughout the globe, US, Europe, Asia Pac, and different parts of, of other regions as well, including Cala. And we asked that question, how they, really the wireless connectivity was impacting really their business. And, and they say that more than 80% of them said that really wireless connectivity was imperative in all areas of the buildings, was really impacting in the pro workers' productivity and also increasing the property value. So, so there is, there is a, a, a big deal impacting in the customer, in the customer mindset about wireless connectivity. But well, you know what, at, at the same time, there are some challenges as well because uh, really to the coverage that we have from the outdoor, from the outdoor networks is not impacting really well inside the buildings because of different things, signalings, signals attenuate with the walls, attenuate with the high performance or high efficient glass uh, windows. So really the, the, the right solutions is to, to install an indoor wireless solution. But to do that, since you're using license spectrum, you need the carrier, you need to go under a carrier approval process. You need to have the carrier permission to do that. And, uh, but that was also changing in time because in the last year, the wireless were, were really doing and developing and installing IBW solutions for, for, for really large venues, tier one stadiums, uh, big arenas, uh, tier one airports. So when we, and, and when you move down, they say, okay, we, we, are going, we are doing that because there is high capacity venues. There is a, a, a large amount of subscribers there. So the ROIs, are higher. But when you move into the enterprise, the situation is different. So they, they, they're not willing to invest in that unless they want to uh, obtain, a, they, they obtain a, a suitable ROI. And that's because we are seeing a, a fundamental shift in the ownership models because we're really the, the, the carrier goals are changing with fixed broadband, FTTH, investment, um, IoT, network virtualization, more spectrum. 
the enterprises need some help to, to solve those challenges. And, and we are pursuing a, a shift in the ownership models where, where enterprises want to take control, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, and, and this is interesting because it used to be that uh, you just assume that the mobile operator would just take care of everything. And it's the responsibility of the mobile operator to provide coverage. And now the venue owners, the enterprise are basically saying, no, no, hold on, we need to have good coverage. So it, they're getting a bigger role, but what, how does that change the relationship that they have with the mobile operators or the role of the mobile operators in all this? Well, uh, really uh, operators are always going to have a, an important role because at, uh, at the end of the day, enterprises are dealing with license spectrum. But enterprises are also finding new, new models to fund the, the IBW solutions. And you have, for example, the traditional carry funded a solution where the carry take, take the ownership of the active part of the DAS, for example, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the passives and the signal source and the backhaul. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay, we're going to install that. Mm -hmm. and, but, but that's happened really in the, in the large venue in the past. But now the, that, that is evolving and we are seeing other models, like for example, the neutral host model, where really a third party company take control and ownership of the DAS system and they really say, okay, they, they have some agreement with the enterprises, which is very attractive for enterprises perceive that it's a less investment from their side. But at the same time, there should be enough amount of subscriber to, to really to, to have a good ROI, not only for the neutral host, but also for the, for the carrier, because they, really the, the ROI should work from both of them, because really the carrier is also going to fund the, the, the signal source, the base station, and the backhaul. And then you have the, the enterprise funding model where they say, okay, we're going to own the, the DAS infrastructure. We're going to own the active part of the DAS. We're going to own the, the, the distribution part and we're going to work with the carriers and with some system integrators and partners, um, back and forward contracts to, you see the signal source, the VTS and all of that. The, those are basically the three main business models that are available, but we're seeing also some, some mixed uh, uh, business or, or funding models the, where, for example, a carrier can fund the, the, the DAS, but also the, the enterprises can own the passive infrastructure, for instance, or some shared cost models, depending on the region. Mm -hmm. Really, the enterprise funding deal, we're seeing them growth. Uh, the relationship with the carriers is still is something that is really, really important. But in other regions of the world, is 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 coming, but it's not as aggressive like in the U.S. market. We are seeing some traction in, in Latin America, in Europe, Middle East, and Africa, also in Asia. But but the big the big growth uh, we, we are seeing in, in in the U.S. Yeah, and so and and the growth you're seeing in the U.S. Uh, or in other parts is it more like. Um, the enterprise is willing to fund at least at the point, because even if you have a neutral host model, the enterprise might provide the funding for, for the infrastructure. Um, and uh, so why is it changing? Is because they realize that the mobile operators are not gonna be able to do the investment uh, or how is, it, how is it working? Well, that's a good question. What, what we're seeing in, in, in the real enterprises is that the reason why they really want to fund the IBW system, there are there are a couple of reasons, but maybe the most strong reason is because they want to take control of their own infrastructure. Sometimes they don't want to wait until the carriers provide a, a solution, but they want to understand what type of solution fits their needs. Sometimes they want to, to have a multi-carrier scenario. Sometimes not a lot of carriers, but maybe more than one because they have some GR or public spaces. And they really want to take control because they want to understand what is going to happen in the future. They, they want to own the scalability of the, mm -hmm. of the that solution as well. But, but I think the, the, the simple answer is because they really want to control that. Uh, it varies that according to different scenarios or verticals, but in the, most of the cases it's because of that. Mm, yeah. Now, what about the neutral host model? Uh, you know, we've been talking about neutral host for, for a long time, but, but the carriers are sometimes a little bit... Uh, uh, let's say careful in, in terms of embracing a, a neutral host model because they, they feel like they have to share the infrastructure, maybe they do not want to do that. Is that, is that changing from, from the enterprise point of view? 
Well, uh, we are seeing that the neutral host model is a really interesting model for the enterprises because it, they are really reducing the investment for the enterprises. Even if they, they own the, the passives, the actives or both, they should have a good relationship with the carriers. And we are seeing that, but not in all the cases. Um, we can talk about when, when we, what we understand for enterprise funded deal, what type of enterprises are the ones that are going to, to benefit from that model. But neutral host, the thing is that when we are seeing some traction, not, not particularly in the, in the enterprises, maybe in the middle between current funded deals, high capacity venues and enterprises. Because remember the amount of subscribers is important because if the neutral host model to work, it should provide a, a good ROI for the neutral host and for the carrier. So uh, that's sometimes is not the cases of most of the enterprises that we were talking about, but it's still a very valid model. We, we are continuing to see traction of that, particularly in the tower business, but, um, but yes. Yeah, now uh, another thing that is sort of like uh, always sort of amazed me is that uh, we know that most of the usage come from indoors. Now it's getting even more difficult, as you mentioned, to get indoor coverage because of the new building uh, codes that, you know, so, so it's even more difficult to get indoors and use the higher frequencies, all that. Um, so why don't we have more in building coverage already? Because it seems like, well, why didn't we start a long time ago? Yeah, that's, uh, that's I mean, actually in Asia, there is much more than in, in the US, but yeah, uh, I think it's a combination, combination of factors. Um, it's, it's really a, such a good question that we did the, a survey to understand better that, but, but in, 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 uh, to, to give you a summary, we believe that after we did some surveys with our enterprises and we asked that question, what were the challenges that they were facing uh, to have a, a, an optimal in building wireless coverage? And they mentioned a lot of them, but maybe the fourth more important were really the cost of the overall solutions really the, the complexity of the technology. Mm -hmm. The carrier approval process, the network operator was one of the parts that they mentioned as, hey, this is a, for us an obstacle. And, and then the lack of skills. When, when they say cost, they say, you know what, that solutions, traditional that solution were designed or, or, or we were think, having thinking that, that they were designed for high capacity venues, for big right. projects, high power projects, and not for enterprises. So really when you, they are not scaling economically down to serve the enterprises or large building. And when they say complexity is because they, you know, commission at that system, we're, we're dealing with the IT people, IT department with IT teams. There is an environment of IT things that were really different for, for what is a DAS and all the RF complexity, you know, the, the, the path loss, RF calculations, commissioning, understanding the different, cards of a head end uh, and that was some complexity that they were hard for them to to include or incorporate into their IT environment and of course the lack of skills was attached to that but the other thing was really the relationship with the carriers because they were feeling that the carriers were not were not being capable to reach every enterprises uh, and at the same time they don't understand how to interact with them how to you know understand what, what is a base station, a signal source, where, what, what are the different types, counter back and forward, the, the, the backhaul. So the, those were the main challenges that we see that, is a, that were some problems. And, and, and in addition to that, we, we believe that uh, in part that was because the ecosystem was not ready to, to really help the enterprises. Mm -hmm. So I guess there's uh, different factors coming together to enable it now. Now at Conescope, what is it you specifically do to help the enterprise address these challenges in terms? It's, it's still somewhat difficult for them to put indoor coverage. Yeah. Well, how, how can you help them? Yeah, it's still difficult for them. We we are really working in the next generation of of, of little dust and small cells, a uh, solution that are friendly to the IT environment. That, that I can explain a little bit about them. But, and then we're working also in how to enable the ecosystem. It's not the least only the solution, it's the solution and the ecosystem that we believe are really, really important. And we're working in the both of them very hard. Um, for example, uh, 
the, the, what we call the next generation of DAS solution, the digital DAS or enterprise DAS that we call IONE, is really a new platform that besides of being multi-operator, multi-technology, multi-band solutions, really a neutral host solutions, it really have some features that, that helps a, an IT manager to really treat it like a, another piece of IT infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So for example, it's like you have a compact head end with cards that are agnostic to the frequency with auto detection, like, like you know, a blade switch or a server, any IT piece of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Then you have like um, a universal access point supporting, that is like a, really like a DAS remote, but mm -hmm. it's really supporting a wide range of frequencies. Right. Uh, and also it's all digital. So you have a front hole that using instead of coax cabling, you are using CAT cabling, category 6A, for example, a standard optical fiber, remote powering like PoE. You're also having a, a very friendly software management tool and also even infrastructure sharing that you can reduce the same cabling to connect to a Wi-Fi access point or even a, or even a security camera. So really making the, the dash solution friendly, scaling the solution economically down so they can really manage that as they almost as they manage a, a Wi-Fi, for example, on another piece of IT equipment. Mm -hmm. And also we're working in small cells. You know, mm -hmm. small cells, yeah. the, the term sometimes is, 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 is a broad term because you have standalone small cells, network small cells, DRS, cloud run small cells. What, what we really are working is the new generation of small cells, what we call really cloud run small cells. It's like, you know, every, every standalone small cell is a, a, a mini base station where you have the basement unit, the radio, the antennas, and it creates small cells of coverage. The problem with small cells that were designed for, for houses or small offices is when, when you put a bunch of them together, it, it really creates an overlap and borders. And in, that, in those borders, you have interference, you have, a, you know, bad throughput, a bad quality of voice and, and you can minimize that of course by, by a careful design uh, you know adjusting and controlling the power the places of the small cells and all of that but it's really a it's really a process that that, that you need to be uh, doing carefully so mm -hmm. what we are really doing with with cloud run small cells is is really the the, the cloud run really you you have a a lot of small cells but they are coordinated, all the processing is coordinated for the radio points with a, with a baseband unit. So you have like a, like a really a super cell of coverage where there is no border inside. And, and that's just eliminated the handovers, the interference, which is great because it actually simplifies the RF design. At, at the same time, it's enabled Cloud Run the cell virtualization. So you, it's, it's, cell virtualization is a way where you really can enable to have a, a small sector of capacity inside mm -hmm. that supercell without having any border as well because the, the, there is a tight coordination between the radio points and the users. So, and in addition to that, it's also using structured cabling, PoE, so it's really friendly to the environment. Those are the things that, that we are really working uh, from the solutions perspective to really enable or help the enterprises so they can treat small cells and that solution as they can treat any other IT infrastructure equipment. Yeah, and, and I guess that's, uh, that's actually a lot of uh, uh, learning for them to do because, it, you know, Wi-Fi, it's usually what, yeah. what they're used to. So there is a, a it, you know, you, they need to deal with the complexity of if it does, they usually don't, don't install it themselves. <clears throat> now, um, you know, sometimes you hear the argument that, you know, if uh, an enterprise has Wi-Fi, why do they need anything else? They can do voice on Wi-Fi, they can do data, video. What, what do you need something else? Yeah, well, that's a, a really good question. You know what? Um, we don't believe that Wi-Fi is, is really the, the, the enemy here. We, we, we really think that, that unlicensed Wi-Fi and, and cellular technologies are going to coexist for a couple of years uh, from now. Actually, we think that Wi-Fi is a great technology. Mm -hmm. That is, is with enormous use bases and, and with enormous ecosystem, and also showing some strong roadmap evolution. If you think about the AO.11 AC Wave 2, the future AX, actually the Y gig, for example, not, I don't know, the uh, 11 AD, the mm -hmm. coming AY, the, it, it's really that 
we believe that really Wi-Fi is something that is going to coexist and is going to be really important as a primary method, particularly in the venues that, that you have, you know, the, the primary workplaces, they will use that uh, in the most of the cases to access data. But when you are seeing venues that you have, you know, the most of them are, are, are private, but then you start having visitors, guests, patients, some share, uh, some, some shared spaces, mm -hmm. uh, LTE and cellular service are becoming to be more efficient. So we really believe that Wi-Fi is not enough. Wi-Fi is, is not allowed to be alone. It is really need to be a, a complementary solution to cellular services. For example, mm -hmm. we are seeing a, a big trend of customers really needing reliable voice connectivity inside the buildings. And when you start having a more dense amount of subscribers, LTE is much more, more efficient, much more efficient to handle those dense environments. Mm -hmm. So we, we really believe that they are going to coexist and they are going to need each other for different parts of, of the venue. Yeah, and, and I guess that that's sort of also the trend in, in the industry where you put different uh, radio access technologies together. So it's not a question of fighting with each other, but what's the best way to integrate them, to get them yeah. to exist <clears throat> together, which um, brings the other issue of how, how are, uh, so the enterprise is getting more and more involved with, the wire, with wireless, but also wireless is changing. So how are they doing in terms of keeping up with the change with, uh, uh, you know, gigabit LTE, 5G? What, what is it they need, the enterprise needs to do there? Well, we, we really think that the, the enterprises, uh, you know, as all those technologies are, are really emerging and are going to take place in, in, in really the enterprise space, we believe that the enterprises should start considering a wireless connectivity at the design phase of the buildings. Mm -hmm. They should start considering, you know, the wireless connectivity early, not only Wi-Fi by DAS, small cells and all of that. Mm -hmm. If you think about the building and you think also about the Internet of Things, there is a convergence there in terms of connectivity. Mm -hmm. You know, that DAS, small cells, and Wi-Fi are using structured cabling, standard IT cabling, copper and, and, and fiber, particularly copper with PoE to connect all those devices. Because and, and, and we are seeing other devices as well, security cameras, sensors, building automation system, and the conversions in, in, in with that connectivity is not only because of the bandwidth, but also because of power. <clears throat> so as all that convergence is, is happening, we believe that, that they can really save a lot of money in the future if they can plan for mobility in the design phases. So if they can have a common architecture that includes all those uh, technologies from the beginning, so you, you can really then, if you're going to, I don't know, have another small cells in the future with, with a different technologies, LAA, CVRS, or whatever, uh, or you are going to scale the Wi-Fi networks, or you are going to bring another type of devices, another type of sensor for IoT. If you really have a, an infrastructure that can support in a flexible way all that with minimal, with minimal interruption to the office, is going to save you a, a lot of headaches and a lot of money. We, we have an approach that is called universal connectivity grid, which is based really in, in, some, in the concept of some cabling rather than desk-centric, where you can really design a platform of connectivity from the beginning, from your telecommunication room to, to a, like a consolidation point in the ceiling. So you can have a spare connection there. So in the future, if you really need to deploy another wireless network with different technologies or another IoT overlay network or whatever, you have the infrastructure in place to support that with, with minimal interruption. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that, that our enterprises should consider from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, especially if they, if, they, if they have a greenfield network so they can design it properly and not be bound to legacy uh, as much. Um, now, let me ask you a final question. Uh, what is that you're working at Conscope right now and uh, what's going to be ready and what should we expect in the next five years? Well, <laughs> one of the things that we are really working is uh, the next generation of DAS and small cells targeting the enterprise. That is something that we're putting a lot of efforts and we're very proud of what we're doing. Uh, and then the other thing that we're doing is really working to enable the ecosystem. You know, the, the, the ecosystem, the enterprise is really, it's not only about the IT people inside the building or the technology, it's also the ecosystem that feeds 
the, the, the enterprise. It's, it's not only about the wireless carrier, but the consultant firms, the wireless integrator, the cable contractors, you know, the, the building owners, everyone that is there, the system integrators, we need to enable that. And we're working really, really hard, really hard on that, as well as, well as looking very closely to the, to the future technologies like CBRS, LAA, LTU, all those technologies that we believe multifier that are going to impact in the near term or in the short, medium term in the enterprise, we're looking very, very closely. For example, CBRS, we are being a, an active part of that. We submit an application to be a SaaS under our concert division. So we took those technologies very seriously uh, in order to make sure we understand and, and really help our enterprise customer in the future. Mm -hmm. Well, good. It sounds like an exciting next uh, five years for you guys. Well, JP, thank you for being here with us today and sharing your insights. Thank you very much, Monica. My pleasure. And uh, this was a conversation that I had with uh, JP Campagnucci at uh, um, Comscope Connectivity Solutions. And uh, thanks for listening in. This is part of a report by a Sense of Feeling collaboration with RCR Wireless on the changing role of the enterprise uh, wireless connectivity. Excellent. Let me stop recording.